Greetings everyone, here we are with another delightful video. This time I'm going to be covering the core rulebook for Star Wars Edge of the Empire role-playing game. I have yet to open this one up because, you know, it's I don't uh, play all these systems with everyone in my groups. I do have like three to four groups that I play with. I happen to have my uh, Karambit out uh, so I can uh, cut the plastic off of this. Uh, please note that uh, I do think there's actually a code sheet in here for this system. I can't remember what website it relates to, but that's why it's in a plastic wrap so people can't steal the code out of it. So there you go. This system is a part of the Fantasy Flight slash Edge Studios Star Wars, Star Wars role playing system. Uh, there is a total of three systems in that family of system. Uh, each of those three systems have only very slight differences between them that you can actually, much like World of Darkness, you can actually combine them all together. You can have a person who is playing a character from uh, Age of Rebellion, and you can have a person playing a character from Age of Emp Edge of the Empire, and you can have another character, a person who is playing a character from uh, uh, Force and Destiny, using three different books, and they work perfectly fine together. Uh, no one will be using uh, Force Awakens because that's literally just a game set. That's the fourth system that died literally as was released. It literally just is a beginner game box in itself. You have to like hunt for it on eBay or something for expensive price. Uh, this system comes with, uh, by the way, this is a custom dice system. So there is all these dice that you have special symbols on them that use the standard form fa the seven uh, the seven standard dice, which is a D6, a D8, a D10, a D12, and a D20 and a D10s. However, they have different colors and they have different symbols on them depending on what you want to use them for. Uh, this book, if I remember correctly, is like 50 bucks, which is not a bad deal, but so oftentimes it is on sale. As you can see, I cracked it open because it's a fresh book and I had to literally open it up. You have a very nice star scene with Slave 1 tucked way down here in the corner. You have to have keen eye to spot that fast. You got Boba Fett right here. Uh, this is really the set. Uh, this is uh, your uh, rebel. Uh, this is your mercenary, not rebel, TTRPG of the Star Wars. You have a beautiful scene right here with the standard Star Wars uh, crawling text. It's in small here. You got a nice little introduction with uh, Yoda here. You got a basic overview of the system and what uh, the system is about. Uh, you have a nice little example of play. Uh, this is a very basic example of play. Uh, sometimes some systems will have a really in-depth uh, example of play. Some systems will have really basic ones. This is a really basic one. This is really basic. Uh, it points out that there's a beginner game for this. The beginner game box, which I've already covered on the channel. And then we have the credits and table of contents. So weirdly enough, the way they have set this book up is you have an introduction and then you have the table of contents, which I guess is okay. You have a section on playing the game, uh, how to run it in narrative play, the core mechanics of the systems. You have the dice uh, table, right, a quick dice table right here. And then we have all the special dice that you need to play this system. So you got different dice, such as you have positive dice, negative dice, and forced dice, and 10-sided dice, which are in their own little fun subcategory. In the positive dice, you have boost dice, ability dice, proficiency dice. On the negative dice column, you have setback dice, difficulty dice, and challenge dice. 
Force dice you have is just force dice. And then the 10 sided dies in uh, uh, is just a, a standard 10 sided die in uh, the system. So they're not specially numbered, they're used as percentile. You have a quick table of various outcomes or on um, die types for the system. And this whole section right here is explaining how to use the dies, the different dice in the system for various things. You got basic dice pool section right here uh, for characteristics for your characters. So uh, explaining how to, how each little level of difficulty is tied to the dice. And you're just continuing on through there. As you can see that it is, as I oftentimes complain about custom die systems, that uh, all the rules are written with the symbol of the die, the color of the dice or the symbol for the dice. And if you have a conversion system for that type of dice in the back of the book, that will oftentimes screw with people because uh, it's not funny because you have to learn the symbols and then you have to convert it to regular dice. So if you are tolerant of the concept of playing with custom dice, with custom symbols, this is okay. But it gets annoying because players will oftentimes be constantly referencing back and forth. And those dice are not really useful for any other system other than this system. So you have the color of the dice, which is the type of dice. And then here, you have success and failure. You've got different symbols. So now you have to put, combine the symbols to the dice color in your understanding. Which I'm quite sure that it gets easier in time as you do it. But it's still an extra layer of difficulty for uh, some people to get over or trying to learn a new system. But as you can see, they put a great deal of effort into explaining how the dice system works. And then they also go ahead and uh, explain all the different wound thresholds, the thresh, uh, silk values, and so forth. You got the character creation section, which goes over how to build a character for the system. It'll also have a section on character backgrounds right here, uh, obligations, and so forth. And then you'll have uh, your species. Each one of these, uh, it's important to note that each one of these uh, Star Wars core rule books, Age of the Empire, uh, Force and Destiny, Age of Rebellion, Edge of the Empire, Force and Destiny, have different races or species in it than the other ones. The only difference is human is like the universal one. There's always going to be a human in every one of these core rule books for the different, uh, different uh, subversions of the system. And droids are very common and so are bothans. <coughs> but you'll t oftentimes have one or two new different species in each one. So there you go. It explains uh, the various uh, stats for the species and so forth. And you got a few more species right here. This guy on specializations for the characters and so forth. And then we go into the actual classes. And each one of these systems has a different group of classes in them so it does this uh edge of the empire doesn't have the same classes as age of rebellion and which doesn't have the same classes as uh force and destiny as well so it's a bit like the pokemon games if you get all three books you have a bigger range of classes and species you can play as the different tech trees is for the different uh, uh class for the classes this is specifically bounty hunter then you have colonist which has its own tech tree. Edge of the Empire is basically a game about people who live way out on the edge of the Empire in the Outer Rim, uh, trying to make a, a living by stealing, uh, 
it, uh, taking territory uh, and so forth. You got hired gun, which is basically equivalent to mercenary in uh, Age of Rebellion. You got smugglers, which are basically like your Holland Solo types. You got your, as I said before, your tech tree, and each one of these, t each one of these has a cost to get. Like this one, bypass security costs twenty, and so forth. You got technicians. And then you have a uh, part six is uh, invest points and so forth. And that is just like the beginning of the book overall. There is tons of stuff like a section on talents and gear and equipment. Uh, yet again, very nice illustrations for the various items in the book. Just very basic though, different armors and communication gear. It also comes with a ribbon, uh, actually two specifically, you got a orange and a pumpkin one, actually it's, it's the same ribbon. That's one way to solve the ribbon uh, fraying on the end solution is basically to sew them together and so forth. Uh, you got rules on building spaceships like customizing hard points on them and so forth various structures or machines. You got a section on the force. Uh, each one of these books has at least like one force user class in it. So you have force sensitive exile in this one. Each one is different by the way. So if you want to have a, a party of all force users that have different tech trees or skill trees, you can go ahead and buy all three books. And uh, there's no fourth book, by the way, for Age of, uh, for uh, Force Awakens. It doesn't exist. But uh, you got a, a, a little table on all the dice again and rolling them for various things and so forth. Overall, this is a very nice book. It is uh, fairly chonky. You got a section on all the outer rim planets and various other organizations that exist out in the outer rim as well as the empire. You got various adversaries, which is this is sort of a core rule book. So you have a bunch of enemies in this book in the back end that your uh, party might run into and have to deal with as they adventure in the outer rim, uh, trying to do their various things. So there you go. Uh, in the very back, we happen to have Edge of the Empire themed in uh, player sheets. Gotta double check to see if there's another one on the other side of this. Nope, that's just in, uh, that's more index. So you have all your basic stats for your character right here. You got, uh, fill out your character information on this other sheet right here. And then on this next set right here, this is your spaceship sheets. Specifically, the stats for your ship, uh, your fire, your different uh, hard points for your ship to fire at directions, uh, your light side, dark sky side scale, and so forth. And then the book, a uh, little advertisement for all three books, if you want to have all your options. So, overall, I feel that this is a fairly solid four stars as a book. This is a core rule book in itself. So it contains all the essential rules to play the system. You have information for players to build their characters. You have information for the game master to uh, create adventures for it. You have enemies in the book for the players to fight. You have multiple classes. You even have a, spell, uh, a force user class in the very back end of the book. Ooh, a little gassy. Huh? I should have let you eat more of the snacks, sassy. So I don't have to overeat eat and get bulgy. But anyways, it's a really nice system. Uh, I just kind of wish it wasn't a custom dice system. Uh, that's It's always harder to get people to play custom dice systems, systems than the standard uh, 
D10s, D12s, or D20 systems, or even just a D6 system. Uh, if you have like custom symbols and all kinds of other stuff on going on with your dice, it just gets harder. Uh, I'm almost tempted to offer this up to my main group to play. However, um, we are going to be switching into uh, the new D&D 2024 version and also getting into testing out Starfinder, uh, Starfinder 2nd Edition playtest and uh, a few other systems. And uh, I had to like continually uh, finish up my... Uh, I had to do some more uh, prep work for my next set of uh, Call of Cthulhu one-shots for them, just in case we're short a few people. So getting between this and that and getting another system into the rotation uh, particularly a, a somewhat chonky system i got a feeling just from reading through the system that it is fundamentally a five a 50 or a 55 difficulty system a very medium difficulty system however due to the custom dice that it uses it artificially inflates itself into a 75 difficulty or crunch system just because it forces players to actually do a whole bunch of extra mental conversion in their brain to work out which dice they roll for which thing at which moment so i got this like preliminary system i've kind of worked out in my head of like a low number is really easy system, really low complexity system, and a really high number between 0 and 100 is a high complexity system. And this is technically feels like it's going to be like a 50 or a 55, like Dungeons Dragons 5th edition. However, due to the custom dice system, it artificially inflates it up to like a 75 in complexity crunch because of all the mental conversion where other systems might be a little bit less. Uh, I personally feel that the sweet spot for any TTRPG is probably around that 40 to 60 range in complexity crunch. It is usually, say like Call of Cthulhu, which is making... Call of Cthulhu is like a 35-40 range. So it's a really on the easy end of crunch for players. Where Dungeon and Dragons 5th Edition is like a 50-55. Uh, 2024 it looks like it's more like going to be a 55-60 range on the crunch factor. Where the 2020, 2014 version of Dungeon and Dragons 5th Edition is a 50-55 range crunch. Uh, this feels like it would be like a 50, but it turns into a 75 because of the conversion on the on the custom dice set so usually whenever you get something that uh, is over 60 it can be popular uh, but it usually has some resistance to it uh, the, the lone exception to the crunch rule was like Dungeon Dragons 3.5 edition which was exceedingly popular but it is like it, how I feel would be something like an 85 an 80 85 crunch system uh very few systems actually are higher than an 85 crunch uh factor most of those systems uh, that have the capacity or the rule set to be higher than 85 have rules that are structured fundamentally in a manner that you can play them at a lower level of crunch but the higher crunch is optional to that system. Overall, I feel that this is a 3.75 to 4 star or book. Uh, there is a lot of explanation on the dice system in it. Uh, it is a core rule book, so it ends up uh, being like 300 pages. 445 six pages whenever you get a system that has over 400 pages that is going to be another factor that is uh, going to filter players to wanting playing it uh, when you get into that 300 plus range means that is uh, the hard spot so I do feel that this system 
has its super fans. It's probably once you get past mentally converting and remembering the types of die and the color, the symbols and the col the types of dice for everything, it gets way easier. Uh, I forget. Yeah, there is. There is no die listing or symbols for all this stuff here. Uh, it would be very nice if there was a key on the column on the edge of the sheet that had all the dice listed out and what they are for. So that would help out a lot. But anyways. I hope you have a delightful day, a nice night, a wonderful weekend, a magnificent month, and see you next time. Ciao.